Hi, Mike Berto here, healthcare economist from Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Louisiana, and the author of the Straight Talk blog. All right, three, two, one. Our presentation today is to talk about the family glitch fix in group health insurance and the rise of individual health insurance coverage and how that's going to impact groups right here in Louisiana. First of all, I'd like to make you aware of this disclaimer. Some of the material we're going to be talking about today might be interpreted as accounting or legal advice, but it's not. And I want to make sure you know I'm not an accountant or a lawyer, and I'm here to give you general information to help guide your decision making going forward. So what is the family glitch? Well, when the Affordable Care Act was passed, Way back in 2010, the law kind of arbitrarily divided the group insurance world into large groups and small groups, all based on a definition of about 50 full-time equivalents of labor every month. Large groups were given new criteria that they had to meet on behalf of their employees to make sure that those employees were getting good offers of coverage that met both affordability criteria and quality criteria. So once the employer met those standards, he could avoid some very large fines. Unfortunately, no standard was ever established for the offer of coverage from an employer to a dependent or a spouse of an employee. And that's what we're going to focus on today, how that has been repaired by the action of the Internal Revenue Service. This meant that in that situation, an employer could meet their obligation to their employee very easily but could also at the same time offer dependents and spouses coverage without putting any money into it at all, forcing them to pay the entire premium. And unfortunately, even that offer of coverage to dependents and spouses would lock them out of the subsidies and tax credits available on healthcare.gov. So it closed off an avenue where they would be able to go and shop for less expensive coverage. About a week or two ago, the IRS issued a bulletin that essentially offered a path to repair this problem, a path to affordable coverage for dependents and for spouses. This would use affordability computed on the entire household's offer, not just worrying about affordability on the employee's offer, but affordability on the entire tax household. The new rule allows non-employee family members that have a premium above a certain income threshold for 2023, it will be 9.12% of their household income to pass on the employer's offer, go to healthcare.gov and draw down whatever tax credits they are eligible for based on the household income. That's a completely different situation than we were dealing with even a month ago. The same standards, however, remain in place for the offer the employer makes to his employee. That offer has to be affordable or the employer will face large fines. In an, if a family goes outside of employer coverage, if that spouse and dependent go to healthcare.gov and shop and get a better deal there and take the deal on the individual coverage on healthcare.gov, that does not create any penalties whatsoever for the employer and it doesn't require them to alter his coverage in any way. So this determination of unaffordable coverage by the exchange, by healthcare.gov, instantly triggers a special enrollment period that will allow that family to shop for up to 60 days, up to 60 days. Now, affordability must be computed on the cheapest plan offered to the household. So if we have dependent coverage and we have two spouses, who are both offered health insurance at their respective workplaces. The least expensive offer from either spouse has to be tested. And then if a particular employee is offered multiple plans, he has to test the least expensive plan he's offered. That is the only way he can get a determination of unaffordability and be allowed to shop on healthcare.gov. Louisiana is a particular outlier when it comes to employers funding their employee coverage. While health insurance, according to the Kaiser Family Foundation in Louisiana, is second from the cheapest in the United States of the offers made to employers, the offers made to employees by those employers 
is the most expensive in the United States. There's not a single state where employees are asked to pay a bigger share of their premiums than there are in Louisiana. So we know for a fact this is going to be a very big deal here. In fact, we've run across many offers over the last six months where families are required to play in excess of $15,000 a year for their family coverage. The national average for that number was about $7,000 a year. So we're moving forward with the family glitch fix. It's going to create this opportunity. The federal government believes about 2.3 million families will take advantage of this coverage during 2023 and move out of employer coverage. Over the next three years, that number could go as high as 5 million households, 5 million, that'll take advantage of the healthcare.gov family glitch. And the good news for employers, of course, they won't be charged if their offer to dependents and spouses fails the affordability test. They won't get a fine, nothing bad will happen to them at that point. We've learned that the industries that are most likely to benefit from this change are very present here in Louisiana. Service industries, agriculture, mining, extraction and construction, which are all very big in the state of Louisiana right now. It's important to remember, if this household seeking coverage is just an employee plus a spouse, the employee's rate that he would have to pay plus the spouse rate are combined to test affordability. But if the household includes tax dependents, like children, then the family coverage including the employee plus spouse plus dependent coverage, that total amount of premium is what's gonna be tested for affordability. And then if it fails, the spouse and the dependents will both be free to shop on healthcare.gov, very important. An employee who receives any offer of affordable coverage from an employer has to take that deal. He's not allowed to go to healthcare.gov and draw credits, even if his spouse and his dependents are on healthcare.gov drawing tax credits. If the employer's offer to the employee is affordable, he's still blocked from tax credits on healthcare.gov. If an employer offers multiple plans, remember, the least expensive one is the one we have to test. Now, we will see during 2023, as employees and their families start to learn about this new test, we're going to see them being stressing employers to try to get out of employer plans and not necessarily just at open enrollment. And so the IRS has already started to comment to tell employers exactly what they need to know when employees want to leave their plan or a cafeteria plan or an HRA or an HSA. And they've encoded that advice into two bulletins, IRS Bulletin 2022-41 and Bulletin 2022-43. We're not going to comment on those bulletins here, but you should get with your CPA or your benefits advisor or your benefits attorney and go over those bulletins if you're an employer to make sure you don't break any rules by allowing people out of your coverage or by not allowing them out of your coverage. Very important. The Center for Medicaid and Medicare Services and the Center for Consumer Information and Insurance Oversight operate the exchanges, healthcare.gov. Beginning on November 1st, new forms are going to be uploaded to healthcare.gov that will allow an employee to test his employer's coverage for his family, his dependents, his spouse, and see exactly whether or not it fits the affordability criteria. If healthcare.gov gives that employee an official determination of unaffordability, then the spouse and dependent can shop for coverage on the website. This is actually a picture of what that form is going to look like on the last page where they hit submit. And notice that the employee has to submit to the website the exact offer his employer is giving him. So the exact amount he has to pay and exactly the amount that he would have to pay to cover his spouse or his dependents. If you want more information on that and CMS's official pronouncements, there's a slideshow on the family glitch available at the website you see on the bottom of this page. I would encourage you, if you're an agent, a broker, someone who deals directly with health insurance benefits, this is a good read and worth your time. So let's use a real world coverage example to explain how this process might work. 
In this case, we have a family made up of Pierre and Eunice, husband and wife, and two children, Edgar and Katha. Both Pierre and Eunice are employed with different employers, and Pierre's employer is offering coverage to the entire family. But Katha's coverage, um, employer rather, offers no coverage at all. So in this situation, to evaluate Pierre's eligibility for advanced premium tax credits, we need the premium for the lowest priced employee only plan. And then we can test it. To evaluate Eunice, Edgar, and Katha's eligibility for advanced premium tax credits, we need the premium of the lowest cost plan that covers the entire family, including Pierre, from Pierre's employer. If we set the Pierre only contribution at $250 a month, and we set the entire family contribution at $1950 a month, then we get the following graph for the entire household. Notice in gray at the top, the family premium, $1,950 a month, and at the bottom, the Pierre only premium, which is only $250 a month. Between them, that blue line that you see running from lower left to upper right is the actual grid of the affordability threshold for this household. At any point, if an employer's offer line is above the blue line, that's unaffordable, and they'll be able to get a determination of unaffordability, and they'll be able to shop on healthcare.gov. Notice in this example, the family premium is always unaffordable, and we've gone all the way for, to a household income in this example of $250,000 a year. But notice at the bottom, Pierre's premium is almost always below the blue line, meaning the offer to Pierre is affordable almost at every household income. In all likelihood, this would result in Pierre taking his employer offer, but the, his wife and his children getting insurance on healthcare.gov with tax credits. And they will have to be careful and need to understand if they're used to having a single family deductible, that will no longer be the case. Pierre would have his own deductible and the rest of the household would have their own. So they'll need to be understand exactly how much that is and they'll need to understand how to track it. This is a hypothetical example. This is a real world example. A quote that we actually ran recently designed to show in an actual offer that's being made here in the state exactly where affordability lies. And you can see in this example, most of the blue line is below the orange line, all the way up to a household income of $220,000 a year. And this is a situation where an employer is kicking in money not just for the single coverage, but also covering 25% of the family coverage. Often employers cover 0% of family coverage in Louisiana, and that looks like this. You can see even more of the blue line, even more household incomes are gonna fall below the affordability threshold. Very important to understand in a poor state like Louisiana, where employers fund at lower levels than other states, the family glitch fix is going to be a lifesaver. It's gonna be something they're gonna use a lot and we need to be well-versed. We need to understand how it's gonna work. Once people go out shopping on healthcare.gov, something new they're gonna see this year or what are called standardized plan benefits. These are the actual benefits in plans that have been specified by the federal government that we're required to offer if we offer anything in the category. Notice that the plan most likely to have the cheapest premium, the standard bronze plan, has a deductible of $9,100, and there are no benefits until you hit that deductible. Notice also that in the silver plan, a $5,800 deductible is considered benchmark. So that's considered the average deductible in these plans. When you get to gold, you get some much better benefits, a $2,000 deductible, much more reasonable, but even more interesting at the bottom, all of the drug plans on the plans are required to have four tiers. So there's a generic tier, there's a preferred brand tier, there's a regular brand tier, and a specialty drug tier. And notice on this particular plan, the specialty drug tier requires only a $100 copay. Think about Embrel or Humira or Cosentix or insulin, all things that cost many thousands of dollars a month. And in a gold plan like this, you could access them for $100 a month. It's a huge discount, gigantic. You can see there are platinum plans available. At this time, Blue Cross is not offering any platinum options.
For lower income participants, these are the plans that you want to show them. These are standardized plans with silver cost sharing reductions, which are designed to make the plan easier to use for folks with lower incomes. Take a look at the plan on the far right, which would be available to folks up to 150% of the federal poverty line. To put that in perspective, the family of four we talked about earlier could make $40,000 a year and still qualify for this plan. Notice some of the benefits on it. On the bottom right, especially, you'll see that same specialty drug copay we were talking about is no longer $100, now it's 50. Notice that PCP copays are zero, that there's no deductible. People who qualify for these plans have some of the best private insurance you will ever see, and there are quite a few people who do, be aware. Also, it's important to point out when people go to healthcare.gov to shop now, that the advanced premium tax credit structure is the richest it's ever been. The federal government is pouring more and more money into subsidies, and the current subsidy levels, which are very high, have been authorized all the way through 2025. So we can sell with confidence these subsidy levels all the way for the next three years and beyond. 2023 is gonna be a year of opportunity for those who are engaged in the individual marketplace. Several factors are going to combine at the exact same time to drive more and more consumers to individual coverage. First of all, the Medicaid programs around the nation have been holding on to members for the last 30 months without checking their incomes or without checking their state of residence. All of that's going to come to an end sometime during 2023, and the Medicaid programs are going to have to unwind these folks from coverage. 18 million potentially nationwide. And they're gonna come out looking for employer coverage or individual coverage, whatever clo most closely approximates what they had in Medicaid. And individual coverage with the healthy subsidies, those cost sharing reduction plans I just showed you, very likely to get their attention. The second thing, the enhanced advanced tax credits on healthcare.gov mean people who could never get federal assistance before are qualifying for hundreds of dollars a month in assistance. It's a total game changer, and it's gonna be in place for the next three years at least. The repair of the family glitch, I think we'd all agree, that's gonna create opportunities for dependents and for spouses to leave family coverage they could never afford, move over to healthcare.gov and buy coverage there. It's gonna move a lot of people over eventually. And what we've noticed in the marketplace, an increasing unwillingness of employers to fund spouse-independent coverage. They're just not interested in putting more money into it, and so that's going to create even more opportunity for people to move from group coverage to individual coverage, and we know what they'll see when they get there. Please keep in mind that we are in a situation now where I am available for you to contact. You can see all of my contact info on the screen, whether it's a phone call, a text, an email, or following me on LinkedIn or Twitter. I'm happy to help and I hope you all have a blessed day.